We are in an interesting time. We live in artificial boxes, artificial temperature, artificial lighting. Just to drink clean water, you need money. What a time to stand up. We're very, very dynamic beings. We absorb everything. We're an extremely toxic world. It's unbelievable that our bodies are holding up. We are all our own scientists. We're all our own doctors. We are all our own farmers. There's a level of honor and reverence that comes from tending your garden. It's about stewarding. That energy is the cornerstone of biodynamics. It's understanding where we are in the world. And it's a spiritual process. It's how can I create something based on the cosmic law and the cosmic forces. The true philosopher's stone is not a bunch of maniac scientists trying to use mercury to turn lead into gold. The true philosopher's stone is the cosmic alchemy turning lead within you into gold. And that's the whole biodynamic way of thinking. Everyone's talking about wanting freedom, medical freedom, financial freedom, all this stuff. What starts with you taking ownership of your life. Hello, beautiful humans. Welcome back to the Know Thyself podcast, where every single week we get the honor and privilege to sit down with a brilliant mind, an open heart, a deep soul, and somebody who can help us know ourselves deeper in the world around us. My guest today is somebody that is a brilliant mind indeed, and somebody I'm really looking forward to having this conversation with. He's a teacher, an author, a mentor, a healer, a health expert, somebody that founded Symbiotica, which is an incredible company I'm excited to talk about, and somebody who is a host of the Wake the Fake Up podcast. <laughs> I love that. And he's somebody that, in my opinion, and just getting to briefly speak with him before this podcast and, and drop in a little bit, he is a walking pattern interrupt. He's somebody that really is embodying the path that he's on. And you can really feel when somebody's embodying their dharma in this life. And this individual is certainly doing that. So, Sharveen, thank you for coming on the show, my friend. Andre, it's an honor to be here. I'm ready to go berserk. I appreciate that <laughs> intro. And I like that pattern interrupting, yeah. just like shaking it up. Like, wait a second, maybe you had it all wrong. Maybe <laughs> I got to get out of my program every single day. And I, I like that because I, you know, I define myself as being the mirror and the reflection, right? Yeah. And so that's like just giving it back to people and saying, hey, maybe there's a different perspective to be had. So I appreciate that intro. Yeah, of course, man. And let's just dive right in because very much so you being a pattern interrupt in the ways that I try to show up in the world as a pattern interrupt. The world around us in modern society and the infrastructure that's currently set up is very much so set up to keep us asleep and put us in a slumber in this hypnotic state of being controllable. And I love the way that you share your message from your heart in the world because from you, you know, when you look at the pharmaceutical industry to the educational industry to agriculture to all the systems that are controlled by big corporations nowadays. Uh, they are very much so set up to have these low vibrational trappings. They're all around us. And so how important do you feel it is to guard our consciousness on the path of really knowing ourselves and to find true health and vibrancy to, uh, to, to, yeah, to guard our consciousness from a lot of these kind of lower vibrational uh, trappings that are out there? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm with you. It's crazy out there, right? And so your question, how important is it? Well, it, it it's really just depends on the person, right? And so... I don't try to be a pattern interruption. I don't try to change anyone. I'm just here in full embodiment. And if it makes sense to someone, exercise the laws of discernment within you. That's really what it is at the core. Maybe something isn't working for you. Maybe the way you've been living for the last 10 years isn't working for you. Maybe the relationship you're in with food, with people, isn't working anymore. And so for me, it's not trying to convince anyone or tell them you got to do it this way or any of that stuff. That's old paradigm bullshit. I'm done with that whole reality. It doesn't serve anyone, doesn't serve me, doesn't serve the person. It's more like, can you make a decision to change your life? Is it something that you want to do? If so, practice discernment, look at it, and explore more. And that's really, I think, where we need to be at at this point, especially where we're at right now, you know, Gregorian calendar 2023. It's interesting times out there. And so if someone's like constantly just trying to like change everything, change everything without looking at the facts, it's never going to go anywhere. So that's my whole thing. That's an anthroposophical perspective, looking at it from your inward self as opposed to what's happening around you and you know we are the master magicians of our reality i strongly believe that beyond just you know fluffy words i'm talking about the epigenetic code your decision making your decision on the water you're drinking the people you surround yourself with how you go about your rituals every single day is what defines you it's all acts of self-love so we either are going to you know take over the self-love within 
or we're going to go a different route. Either way, there's no problem. That's your, that's your dharma. That's a combination of your karma and your chosen truth. Nobody has a right to tell you you're doing it wrong. I'm tired of that. I don't want to, I don't, I don't feel into that anymore. Yeah. This is just, Hey, this is what's working for us over here. We're stoked. We're thriving. We're having the best time ever. If it's something that interests you, you know, go pick up a book, you know, <laughs> start, start doing something that's a little bit different than the, the way you've been doing things and see what happens. Cause everything's momentum based brother, everything. You know, how you do anything is how you do everything. So once you start getting into the flow of things, then all those things that you just brought up, those things start to dissipate a little bit. Yeah. The, the seize and the control, the grip of it is based on a human, a human that's fleeting all the time, that's escaping. Those systems, those corporatocracies that you mentioned, that's all about escapism. How, how do we take you out of your present? How do we, you know, how do we rob you of your sovereignty? How do we rob you of your own decision making, your own free will? And it started at an early age. I believe it started in the womb. It started in the cosmic lovemaking, even, even before the womb, went into the womb, went into preschool, went into kindergarten, went into all this state-sponsored program stuff. I can go on and on about this. And so at, at some point, you just need to like be like, okay, is this is this Am I happy here? If not, try something else. Yeah. As we become individuals that first, you know, if we want to affect change and liberation in the world, it's really just an inward job. If we, we've all been truly transformed by being in contact with somebody who is an embodied, liberated version of themselves. Like that's what actually changes when somebody lives their message, like their life is their message instead of just the fancy words and try to intellectualize the way to liberation is, is a very big distinction between intellectually knowing something and knowing the intelligence of the body and having that deep gnosis. And I think when you walk as that pillar and that level of embodiment in the world, then you're just a beacon of light. And everywhere you go, you illuminate darkness. Hallelujah. Well said. Yes. That's again, that's another Steiner concept is that you can be intellectualized to the highest level, but if there's no action, there's no movement, it's nothing. It's all for nothing. It's actually worse. Right. And so instead of just getting into the thoughts and the ideas of it, implement real daily tasks. You know, that's why like in Waldorf education, it's not just, you know, learning long division. It's learning how to build things. It's giving children the um, the permission of their own soul's desire to do the things that they want to do, to learn and build things with their hands. We're, we, you know, we've, we've, we've lost that, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not creating anymore anything with our bare hands. We're not planting gardens. We're not doing anything. That, that whole thing right there is dropping us out of our ability to stand in our power. And that's that's really key. That's why like rewilding your children, rewilding yourself is is paramount to any type of spiritual growth. You cannot have spirit if your anchor is fleeting and falling over left and right. Yeah. It's just having that deep, present, connected uh experience with nature and we've become so disconnected and you know a lot of times people um especially that are trying to you know find the quick fix instant gratification way to become more healthy or find the solutions to their problems in life when the real root of the issue is so deep seated within their paradigm and of how they're operating is the identity in which they view themselves in the world around them and the environment that they're currently planted in like the they need to be planted in a new environment and uh, it can feel like a lot when you look at how deeply rooted you're in uh, a system that is so set up for you to really fall into low vibrational unconscious ways of behavior. But as you start to wake up and go on this process and like do not overcomplicate it and realize that you can just start small and implement one change in your diet and your health and your mindset with the people that you surround yourself to, all the things that we've been talking to. And from that, you become available to a new level of life pre presenting you with more opportunities for growth and in those connections and all the different ways and the mirrors that life shows us. So um, yeah, man, we can go on and on here. I think it's so fascinating that you were able to have access to so much of this beautiful wisdom and awareness at such an early age, because it's a pattern interrupt that most, most people are not raised anywhere near and having, being able to have access to that level of information. So how did Rudolf Steiner's anthroposophy and um, your upbringing and having so much awareness in certain you know topics, how did that affect you and fundamentally change the way in which you show up in the world? Great question. Well, I didn't consciously know it at the time, but I was built 
you know, on a level of clairvoyance. My whole childhood was, I had clairvoyant visions. I was intuitive about everything. I was an investigator. So I'm, I'm a one, three generator with an anarchist investigator martyr in my, basically in my DNA. I didn't know that at the time, but I had parents that allowed me to be a free spirit and to expand on that. And, you know, I grew up in the eighties as a kid before there was like, you know, this hardcore technological, you know, aramonic energy of just like hyper materialism. So I was, you know, I was in the play, I was in the forest, I was in the canyons, I was at the beach. And so my whole thing was being able to expand as a, as a child and full imagination and awareness. And then you throw that in with the mentorship that I had at age nine and 10 by my cousin avocado, Dave Wolf, you know, this was a time that he was becoming a hardcore raw foodist and actually was like at the center point of that in the world as, as one of the most famous raw foodist people in the world, that energy gave me a perspective that was outside of the, you know, the standard American diet and all that stuff. And having Persian parents that were immigrants, I got their ancient practices, their energy as well. So it all kind of cultivated and um, it set me up for understanding Rudolf Steiner's anthroposophy and really breaking down our purpose-driven life and like really being present his whole thing like we can get into biodynamic farming we can get into waldorf education all those things but i would say like his core legacy work is really understanding where we are in this realm it, it, around these opposing forces and understanding the hyper spiritual and the hyper mechanical and the hyper you know materialistic and like i just i kind of got that at an early age it wasn't quite where i am now um, through, you know, all the practice that I've gone through over the last 12 years. Um, but I kind of, I saw that at an early age and it really helped me make decisions in my life. Um, you know, to put me in a position to not having to keep failing all the time where, you know, the whole thing is you're supposed to fail, get over it, build up. It's just like your immune system. Right. But you don't want to keep failing at the same thing. Right. And that seems to be like kind of a common condition. It's like people keep making the same mistakes. And, you know, this life's not that long you know our souls are forever i truly believe that but in these material bodies we're you know what did rumi say i'm going to paraphrase we're a drop of we're a drop of water in the ocean of time right it, that's true and that always held you know like true to me and so i'm not here to keep going in circles and keep making the same mistakes i want to learn from it and that's also a rosicrucian perspective where you're really a devout initiate and you're really looking at your life in detail and not just being unconscious with how you're doing everything all day long, how you're listening to music, what, what you're feeding your soul. I'm talking about everything, communication, food, energies, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I knew at a, at a you know pretty early age that everything that was, you know, being thrown my way as you know, this is your savior, or this is going to make things easier for you was to my detriment. And I, I didn't want that. I didn't want convenience. You know, convenience today and protection is the Trojan horse. We, we can see it now. I mean, it's, it's all over the place. I mean, there's, you know, billions of cameras out there, you know, the internet of eyes, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that's happening that's not to our not to our liking as a human species because we're not exercising and developing faculties that we should have been, right? And so one of those main faculties, in my opinion, is empathy, right? Because if you don't know where your food's coming from and the hard work that went into it and the commitment to keep that thing going, you're you're you know you can't build empathy for food. Yeah. If you don't have empathy for food and, and reverence and uh, you know you're grateful for that, you're you're gonna miss the boat on other things. And so I feel like we're in generation lost almost, where we've forgotten what we've forgotten. And that's really the true alchemy of being an initiate and having devout respect for all the laws of this world. And you just look at the generations today. I mean, it's it's wild out there what's going on. So my whole thing is we gotta we gotta get back into um, an awareness that. We are our own savior, you know, regardless of religion or anything like that. The mentality is we are here to save ourselves and no one out there is going to save us. Yeah, That's an important, powerful move and to plant your flag of sovereignty. Everyone's talking about wanting freedom, medical freedom, financial freedom, all this stuff. What well, starts with you taking ownership of your life and you being the, the person who's going to discern everything yeah. and you building those faculties. So that, that was... That's, I would say that's what really pushed me to get to where I'm at right now. A quick share from today's sponsor. 
I'm a warm beverage kind of guy. <laughs> I like my tea, cacao, and other products like from our sponsor today, Mudwater. Mudwater is a coffee alternative with adaptogenic mushrooms and Ayurvedic herbs. With only a fraction of the caffeine as a cup of coffee, you get the energy without the jitters or crash. Their original blend has chai and cacao, mushrooms like lion's mane to support focus, and chaga and reishi to support your immune system. I personally also love to use the rest blend as a part of my nighttime ritual. It has no caffeine and ingredients like ashwagandha and chamomile to help you chill out. I add a little bit of honey and coconut creamer and boom, you are in business. Everything is 100% organic, non-GMO, gluten-free, vegan, and delicioso. <laughs> I love what this company stands for, how they believe in creating healthy minds through healthy habits and how they donate monthly to mental health causes. To try them out, you can go to mudwtr.com slash know thyself and use code know thyself for 15% off. And they'll even throw in a free rechargeable frother. As always, everything is linked down in the description below. Back to the episode. First off, there is so much programming from society and from media to tell us that our worth comes from garnering external riches. That's right. And Real wealth actually comes from developing those internal riches, those faculties that you're talking about of empathy, of the power of perspective and perception and imagination. And uh, those are so underdeveloped on the mass scale right now. And when you meet somebody who is a pattern interrupt and actually has developed those faculties within, you see firsthand as within, so without the external reality and how abundantly clear that's been reflected by developing those inner riches. And then you become a match to that externally in a life of alignment, not just not just wealth in the terms of money and like, you know, in that aspect, but aligned. True abundance. Impact. Yeah, true abundance. True abundance. Yeah. Right? Like reaping the benefits of true abundance. Yeah. Most like, people think that wealth is just like, Lots of money in the bank, but wealth is so, it's your vitality, it's who you are in alignment with abundance. So, currency, right? Yeah. Currency. Like, that's the real, like the electrical energy of flow, whether it's food or health. Like, what are you working so hard for? You know, for money? Or are you so stoked doing what you're doing every day? And the side effect of being stoked is abundance, right? Or why are you going to the gym to have the best physique and have the aesthetics? Or are you doing it to get healthy and the side effect is a physique? It's really like how you, how you do anything is how you do everything. I really tell people like having a devout, you know, I would say commitment to excellence for things that you know are going to bring you higher and make you be a pillar in your community. That's the highest reward. And those, those are the people that are, are reaping rewards today. Yeah. Once you experience how good alignment feels, then you become like, the, we spoke to that walking light and you become a magnet to people realizing that and having the desire for that. And once your mind expands, it's not going to contract to the same place. Like once your awareness grows to what's possible and how good you can feel internally and how good and juicy your life can be externally, then it rewires your desire in a, in a way where all of, all of a sudden the things that you value in life completely change. Absolutely. One day it can all just shift, you know, whether you are you got your head blown off by ayahuasca or some other entheogen, <laughs> or you just have this realization that, wait a second, like I was never loving myself. I was never giving myself a chance. You know, wh why was that? What trauma happened when I was 12 you know, someone told me I wasn't going to amount to anything. Someone told me I'm worthless. Someone told me this or that, or I got abused by, you know, bullies or something like that. And you just all of a sudden you're like, wait a second, I've been defining myself based on some trauma, mm -hmm. or I've been defining myself based on what the world is telling me that I'm a victim. And so I got to live in that scarcity or poverty conscious. And it's just not allowing me to open up and find people and, and love and reverence and all that stuff. The law of attraction is real and it's on a deep esoteric and scientific level. The, you know, the, the field of resonance that we're operating in is a vibratory field. You know, this is beyond just a toroidal energy field or anything like that. We actually have a Hertz, you know, electrical signal. Your body is electrical. My body is electrical, right? And so if we're operating in those types of, you know, subconscious networks of fear, worthlessness, I'm not worthy, not, that's all you're attracting in your life. That's it. And that's why once you have those aha moments, you start building momentum, then synchronicities come right? Hyper synchronicities. I'm sure you've experienced that where you're just like, 
that's impossible. Mm -hmm. I can't even quantify what just happened. Let me try to do some calculus. Nope, doesn't even add up at all. And that's that's kind of the reality we're living in right now. I feel like the flow I'm in right now with my ne my network and my tribe, we're living in that hyper synchronicity. And look, life isn't perfect. It's not supposed to be perfect. You can't have light without dark and vice versa. And that's another thing we have to be aware of. Like, I'm forever a student. I'm always going to be learning. I like just connecting with you, just having this chat with you before we started. I'm learning things and I'm open to receive that. You know, the ego in me is the desire to keep crushing it, keep building abundance, keep getting healthier, keep taking care of my family. That's my healthy ego. The false ego is the scarred up tissue wounded person that doesn't know it's there and is operating with that type of mentality. That's really important people hear that and receive that. Yeah, it's so easy to demonize the ego, right? But that distinction and discernment you just gave between shadows that are operating within the realm of conscious awareness versus the type of ego that is actually useful in creating and building and supporting and, and doing all that, it's a it's a big distinction. And 100%. even just having the awareness of that and being able to quiet the mind to be a humble student and to realize that you always what you know is always within a larger context of what you don't know. Right. And as long as you can see that you're operating within a larger context of ignorance, <laughs> then you can walk a little bit more gently. You can speak with a little bit more curiosity and not so much certainty and you become open. And I think from that place, it becomes a much more uh, prudent and beautiful way to live life because you're not under the certainty of thinking that who you are and the identity structure that you've accumulated and what you think you know is the absolute truth because then you get stuck and when there's no movement then the energy can't move right very well said yeah that was that was spot on you hit it right on the nail having a level level of humility and humbleness is really our ability to bob and weave and expand ourselves if the it's rigidity right that starts to get you know, kind of out of hand. You're seeing that today. You see it in the in just the way the mainstream media is. You see that in the way science is. Science is supposed to be science. It's not supposed to be religious. Science has become the new religion. And it's, it's very clear. It's scientism is dogmatic now. It's rigidity. It's this way. Don't look over here. Don't look at this. This is just the truth. And that, that's become the new prevailing Darwinistic religion today is, is scientism, in my opinion. And I think it speaks to a greater level of creating ego energies of just people thinking that, you know, whatever they read in school or whatever they read off the internet is true. And they're not open to have a balanced conversation to hear different sides of it and look into things. You know, it's, it's, it's part of the, the realm we're in today. Steiner called it. He said that in 21st century, we're going to be hitting a level of uh, materialism that we've never seen before. He calls that the Aramonic deception. And he said that, um, you know, if we don't shake out of it around this time, around like 2020, we'll have 20 years from this point on, right? This is like artificial intelligence, you know, metaverse, all of these crazy things. If we don't, sh if we don't shake out of that, like our ego cannot remove from this, like this, I don't know, malevolent attack on humanity's conscious, we're going to enter something called the eighth sphere. And the eighth sphere is a dystopic world, complete. It's like Wall-E, like the movie where we have no connection to our mother. We've lost all that. And the souls that are incarnating here are pretty much soulless. Yeah. And I think there's truth to that. And it, it, it's it, it's part of the conversation we're having, right? About ego and about, you know, standing up in like your values. What's all we need? We just need people with values that are not, you know, in their own pain and sorrow 24 seven, that have done some work standing up for each other. That's what this world's missing. And, you know, after this whole, you know, pandemic situation, I see that I see more of a line has been drawn and people are, you know, mothers especially have so much love for the women out there, the mothers out there. They're just like protecting themselves, protecting their children at all costs. Lioness is epic. And um, I think that that energy is really what is going to save us mm -hmm. to a certain extent. Yeah, and what we're encouraging people to tune into because it can get heavy when you're tuning into this paradigm or narrative that these reptilian overlords are controlling <laughs> all of the chemtrails and all the deleterious things that are happening to our system on a biological level. Uh, Astrazine. <laughs> yeah. And then you can tune into the other side of the coin, which is actually there are conversations like one we're having right now and individuals that are shining the light and giving real perspective that 
we have gotten to the place we've gotten to. We're here. We can't bypass that and put that under the rug. There's real effects that have happened on the planet right now within us and with and, and around us. And we have the power to course correct. 100%. Like if you're too in the clouds, like you're escaping, you're just out there, spiritual woo-woo and ungrounded, you're missing the boat on everything and it's going to come and bite you in the ass. You're not going to be prepared for it. If you're just like hyper material, you know, you're just building your house on top of the hill, you know, sequestering all your money and your whole life is revolved around that, you know, you're going to fall apart at the seams because your whole world is stuck on that system. It's that Christ conscious. It's like finding your balance between polarization and knowing how to navigate. I'm all for, you know, a Hindu philosophy where, you know, Krishna is saying, this is all an illusion. Poof, this is not even real. But I also know I'm in this body. Right. So it's it's like we got to have that that balance, in my opinion. Again, this is my opinion. This isn't truth. This <laughs> is just version that's working for me and just makes sense based on our cosmology and where we are in this world, which is another thing people need to start investigating. Where are we? What is this? You know, everything we've learned is coming from t- some t- type of state sponsored program. And I'm, I, I'm not saying anything. I'm not making any claims or anything like that. It's just like, what if everyone was like, let's investigate things. Like we are all our own scientists. We're all our own doctors. We are all our own farmers. We're all our own therapists. Like activate all the information's there. It's never been a time ever that so much information has been out there for better, for worse too, right? Because that's when discernment has to play its part, right? I highly encourage people to just like step into that. We need you. You know, we're there's no hierarchy here. I don't have anything that nobody else has. You don't have anything nobody else has. F that. I think we all here, we, we all have that ability. It's just a matter of how bad you want it and how bad you're really to put yourself out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I just love the sp- the energy you spoke to of just finding the middle way of realizing that we are in this world, not of it, but we are in these physical bodies. And the more that we can take care of it, it is our vehicle for awakening and uh, understanding that there is a larger context in which we are so identified with our own thought and emotions in this physical form when there's a larger context that we are existing within. And this approach that you spoke to of still inviting in the scientific method and discernment and critical thinking, but not accepting the scientism that has been presented to us as absolute truth, right? And being able to have that, I think it just allows you to develop clarity in your life. And that's what's needed to move in the direction of alignment is just having clarity. And there's so many things that are pulling us away from clarity on a physiological, psychological level and spiritual level. And so what have you found are like a couple of the top real impactors that are really pulling away from people's clarity, but then also bring people into clarity within their life? Great question. Um, You know, I think first and foremost, it's just your everyday rituals, right? That has to be part of the program. Now, I'm not of this mindset that we have to be militaristic about everything. I don't think that's fluid for being human. I think that there are stuff that is non-negotiable, but we got, we need to find balance. Like for example, you know, what water are you drinking? Let's just start at the, you know, the bare essentials. Like, are you drinking spring water? Do you know what the TDS of that water is? Total dissolved solids. Do you know where that water is coming from? What water are you bathing in, right? Are you bathing in municipal tap water that's filled with trihalomethanes and all kinds of carcinogenic compounds that are lowering your senses and causing inflammatory response throughout your entire body, creating low-grade anger and frustration and resentment? That might be a problem. Are you breathing (laughs) in the vapors of that water, which is getting directly into your alveoli, expressing into your blood, causing all kinds of micro and fraction inflammatory response systems, cytokines. I can go on and on. IL-1, IL-8, all these different things. Um, Are you sleeping properly? Like most people have been in partnerships for like 10 years and have no idea that they can't sleep next to their partner because they have different dojas or different biochemistry or different energies. Maybe they need to sleep separately. You know what I mean? Are they not sleeping in a dark room that's 64 degrees? Are they waking up with alarms? Are they not getting full sun exposure on the rides? Are they not hydrating properly on the rides? Are they not properly mineralized? I can go on and on. I think there's fundamentals that we have to have. And then from there, because I I would say the most asked question I get is, Shervin, how do you detoxify, right? Um, My cousin said, in this realm, detoxification might be more important than nutrition. And there's some truth to that because we're an extremely toxic world. 
Like this is the, what we're dealing with on a daily basis is insane. It's it's unbelievable that our bodies are holding up, but we're also seeing a lot of bodies that are not holding up and a lot of minds that are not holding up. So before I go into like an exotic detox plan where it's like chelation therapy and all this different stuff, just stop putting in things that don't belong, right? Like stop eating like those fried foods, stop eating that GMO food, stop putting yourself around, you know, t TV and television, get all that stuff out of there. That's the first place of detoxification. We got to keep our bodies and minds as clear as possible. Without that, without the faculty of clarity there, forget about going into higher levels of attainment or higher levels of potential. You're That's just dreaming at that point, or you know, it's kind of a false narrative, false reality. I think we need to be able to be in a place where our bodies and our minds are rejuvenating properly. We've gotten into this system too, where there's too much of a burden, too much of a stress on the body. And then at that point, we're coping with it by accelerating with other things like drugs and caffeine and foods and sex and all those things. Those are all stimulatory, excitatory. And when you're in a level of cortisol stress, your body's spiked with stress, you're dysregulated, you want, you need more stress to, to feel normal, right? That's why a lot of people, they can't sit in the quiet. They can't sit in silence. It's uncomfortable for them. They need stress. And you've seen that. You see those people, you know, they're driving on the roads. They're pissed off. You cut, you know, fender bender, they're ready to fight you on the street, right? And it's it's really just like, how are we approaching the awareness? And I think you, someone can hear me talk about these things, but unless you learn why and how this works, it's not going to work. That's a big deal for me. That's a big deal for everything I'm doing with Symbiotica. You know, we're not just some supplement brand. It's like, you need to learn why this is like this. Why did we design something like this? What the R&D said, what the intention was. You, you, Again, everyone be your own master magician and doctor and learn why you need proper sleep. If your sleeping is off 20% a night, in a year you're screwed up, you know, and that's a problem. And I think fundamentals are the key savior for you to go into the next level of devoutness and really becoming a pillar in your community. Yeah. Beautifully said, man. I love that. <laughs> it is a beautiful rant. I'm so, if I'm riffing and ranting, just you got to cut me off because I, I keep going. I just like, there's no, so much. It's great. I'm, me. I'm here for it, man. Okay. I think we are incredibly resilient human beings and we can bear the weight of a physiological toxic payload for a sustained period of time. And that's going to create a lower level vibrational experience of our reality, but we can stand it. We can withstand it. That's the dangerous part. That's the dangerous part. What you just said right there is key. Yeah. We can withstand it. That's the problem. Yeah. Because if we couldn't withstand it, we would have to make a drastic choice. For sure. For sure. Keep going. So, but I really love the point that you brought up about this idea of addition by subtraction, right? Because yeah. it's living in a society that has so many toxic situations around us that seep within us. It's to find true health and vibrancy. We find so much, uh, a big leap from where we're currently at by reducing the things that we're currently doing that we're often unconscious or unaware of that are actually leading us to the place that we're at right now. So I think you spoke to some powerful ones there with sleep, with water. Um, maybe you're not supposed to wear perfume and cologne all day long. And <laughs> or put, maybe at all. <laughs> exactly, yeah. right? It's just like those key things. Like how are we poisoning ourselves every single day? Like do a forensic audit on your life. Yeah. Again, that goes back to Rosicrucianism. That's being an initiate, investigating every decision that you make through a 24-hour span. How did you react to a certain conversation? How did you react when someone said something to you? What, what patterns do you default to? Like what's your default network, right? We got to get into that level of investigation for self. That's how, I mean, again, you don't have to, but this is an opportunity. If you're listening to this, this is an opportunity to create momentum in your life where maybe six months from now, you're in a completely different reality. You know, every part of your body is rebuilding itself over the next four weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks. I don't care what it is. Surface skin, lungs, brain, spleen, liver, kidney, blood. All of these things are going to be brand new probably in the next six months. So you're literally a recreation of yourself. How are, what are you going to use to recreate that? That's really what it is. Yeah. And it's an exciting invitation that you're offering here that you 
have gotten to the point where you're at, whoever's listening to this, whatever uh, illness, disease, physiological, symptomatic thing that's like kind of pestering you, but is not causing too much of a distraction from living in your daily reality, but to invite this awareness that you can start to make some simple changes, implement different things that you're doing within your behavior, and then investigate like, all the things that you're doing are contributing you to have the body that you have. And we want to often change our reality by fixing our thinking about things. But the mind, body, unity and connection is so overlooked, especially in Western civilization, where it's like if we deal with what's going on within the body, like you spoke to the things that are within the water systems that are creating these low vibrational feelings of fear, guilt and shame that are hardwired within us. Uh, we're not so aware how important it is to first work with the body to develop vibrancy and then to have a, how it's so connected with our mind and our outlook and then what we attract, right? Because like you spoke to, we are vibrational beings. Our body is emitting that frequency. What is the constitution of our body? That is the constitution of the vibrancy and the vibration. Absolutely. Well said. Yeah. And your body will recognize your decision-making. And that's when self-love starts to kick in. That's when you notice all of a sudden you start feeling better. And all of a sudden you're like, wait, wait a second. What the hell? Yeah. Is this real? Can I actually feel this good? I think we were talking about it earlier. Oh, how, how are you? How good do you feel? Well, you only know as good as you can feel. You, you possibly don't know what's going on. And, and don't mistake it. The body 24-7 is blunting your pain centers. That's a fact. If you ever pressed on like certain parts of your hip or wherever, and it's like, it feels like shards of glass is in there. And you're just like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. And if you go to like a deep, deep body worker, I'm talking someone who like gets into your guts, you know what I'm talking about? And you're like in tears, all of a sudden trauma is coming out and all that kind of stuff. Our body's constantly numbing everything. And that, and as soon as you pre press off, the pain goes off. What that means is that there's pain there all the time fibrotic tissue, buildup of weird stuff, oxidative stress, all that kind of stuff. We, we, we need to realize that we're, we're numbed out to the fullest level. And so we got to get uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, that's hormesis, right? That which does not kill you makes you stronger. That's why you're jumping in the cold plunge. That's why you're going in the infrared sauna. That's why you're inverting, whatever whatever it is that you're doing, living in the jungles for a month, you know, going on a medicine payload or whatever it is, is you're getting yourself uncomfortable. So you're in survival mode. We need to be in survival mode. We used to have to go and hunt for our water. We used to have to go hunt for our food. Now it's like, it's complete opposite. We live in artificial boxes artificial temperature, artificial lighting, artificial water, artificial relationships. What is that doing to us? It's doing a lot. So again, to make this simple, I would say is just start simplifying things and take it step by step. It doesn't need to be this drastic wholesale change. And it's not this exotic stem cell therapy you need to spend a hundred grand on. It's none of those things. Get some sunlight. You know what I mean? Drink some clean spring water, maybe get a shower filter, Maybe, you know, maybe you just stop talking on the phone all night long <laughs> and get some sleep. Maybe you're not eating a big old meal at 9 p.m. You know, maybe you're off the blue light bullshit. And you're like, you know what? I'm just going to try not having blue light exposed to me all, all day long. You know, things like that. Let's just start with fundamental core health principles. And then we can take it up a notch with supplementation, with movement stuff, with breath work and more exotic things. Yeah. Wonderfully said. I think we do overcomplicate it sometimes. and so It can be as simple as going out in the sun, taking some slow breaths, and just feeling what's happening within your experience. And mm -hmm. you spoke to it. It's beautiful that our system is so intelligent that it's not giving us the conscious awareness of the pain that we're holding on to because it would make our living existence unbearable. Uh, but our body is holding on to so much stuff that is holding us back. And, you know, that process of awareness of taking those breaths and having these different things that can bring you into a slightly altered state of consciousness that is expanded from your typical way of, of operating within life, then you gain awareness and you can start to feel into the parts of your body that are holding on to things. Thank you for holding on to it because it needed to for a certain period of time. And we can let it go. And we spoke to well, on one hand, the detriment of living in a society that is so convenient for everything. We're living in this artificial world now from totally. intelligence to, to all the things. Um, and to, to just bring it down to earth into all the all the ways that our bodies is still holding on to toxicity. And we spoke to this earlier, how true growth really comes from letting that go. What is in the way? What are the true barriers of joy? Who we are in our essence is free. Who we are in our essence is joyful. Who we are in our essence is connected and abundant. 
And so if we want those things, which I assert we all do, because <laughs> it's who we are, we feel the underlying truth, then it's a matter of removing what's in the way of it. And that's a process. So if there's anything you want to speak to with that, but then also I'd love to plant some more seeds as to certain things that are continuing to detract and create those barriers within our life. We touched on a few, but if there's some other ones that we can bring up, I think that'd be beautiful. Just stay away from gossip. I think that's a, I think it's a parasite, yeah. right? In my opinion, it's a parasitic energy. It's venom, you know, and there seems to be an attraction to people's downfall and understanding people's drama and getting involved with those types of things. Like, how did we get to that point where that's like glorified and it's created, it's become like a drug. That's a big deal. You know, I keep a lot of my, like, you know, I would say intimate life private. And I do that because I don't want to, I don't want people involved in my business and everybody's so nosy about other people's business. I'm not, I don't give a shit. I don't, I don't want, I don't want to know. I don't care if someone wants to tell me and get me involved in their relationship and is asking for a perspective. Okay. That's one thing. But like, I'm not trying to learn about other people's stuff. Why? For what? You know, and that's a whole thing that I've noticed is just starting to get out of hand. Started with the media, started with, you know, all these TV shows and all this bullshit. It's like, why are we so obsessed with drama? And it comes in so many different forms. In my opinion, it's it's a dopamine release. It's escapism. And people are in so much, you know, hatred of inwardly they have to off gas that onto somebody else. And it's almost pleasurable for them to see someone fall. It's like we're in that reality where people are not stoked if you're succeeded, succeeding and crushing it and you're on top of your game. Like there's a resentment there. That's a parasitic energy in my opinion. And it, they could be loaded with parasites too at the same time, in, in my opinion. Yeah, and the heart intro intrinsically connected you know <laughs> totally. that parasitical energy i love the visual of like <laughs> off gassing your trauma and wanting to pull down and thrive and, and feel good and feel some sort of resonance with somebody's downfall and the cancel culture and how it's all inter intimately connected cancel culture holy moly <laughs> i think they overplayed their hand on that one it's yeah. starting to it's bounced back on them for yeah. sure yeah, yeah. Like we were speaking it's just to fear that's what all cancel culture is it's fear it's judgment yeah. which is the opposite of discernment, mm -hmm. right? Instead of making a decision based on the facts presented and doing it, your own calculation, it's just based on an immediate visceral judgment reaction, which is always fear. Yeah. yeah. I, I love what we're talking about, man. I think this is really important for people to, to get and feel. I mean, we could talk about all kinds of stuff. We can get into psychedelics. We can get into health. We can get into all the things. But really at the root of it is this level of like inner discernment. And being able to become, you know, in charge of your life yeah. as opposed to just being fleeted victim 24-7. It takes courage, man. We live in a time where it's so easy to conform to the norm. And it takes real courage to break through. And so I think the invitation that we're discussing and how it is very fundamental into like how you look and perceive reality around you is the first step in growing that awareness to implementing the difference in your behavior and your practices and how that creates the constitution of your body and in and, and your mind, man. Uh, you are somebody that is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to how the body works and how you can find that level of vibrancy through the things that you stop doing like we, we talked to, but then also the things that you can introduce to your system that were because of the nature of how we've gotten to as a culture and society and the soil and we're not getting it. And so, is yeah, there's so much that we can dive into here, man. <laughs> totally. <laughs> there's yeah. so much. But you starting Symbiotica, I think is just a really powerful, and I shared this earlier, of somebody that's creating in you know a real company and, and tribe and and amazing products that are in integrity, that are real. Like you guys, you care about what's actually being put in them. Yeah. It's not just trying to make the biggest business or you know the, create the biggest margins as possible, but things that will really impact people and, and make a true transformation and difference in their life. I appreciate you saying that. What yeah. a journey this, this has been. <laughs> you know, I, I always knew this was gonna happen and uh, it was definitely a pain to purpose in my own life. Um, you know, around the time that um, I birthed Symbiotica, I was deep in, you know, the cancer realms with my father. And um, my dad, for better or for worse, was my best friend, like my life partner, my soulmate. He was my father, my mother, my son. And it was, um, it was like a 5-MEO DMT ceremony for like four years with the craziest peaks and the craziest, you know, 
falling into the darkness, you know, the dark night of the soul, three days a week here. It was so hectic. And I, um, I was pretty sure that I was going to be able to save him. I was in that kind of like, you know, heady mentality and almost Luciferic mentality of thinking I can be God and, you know, and I had to show up that way. Um, and as the, as it just kept rolling back and forth, it was just like, it was just so, it was so full on, man. I I'd never experienced anything like that. Um, I'm still not even anywhere equipped to be in a healing path for it. And to be honest, to be straightforward with you, it's, it's something that I, I just find myself in fetal position sometimes, can't even move, can't even talk. And that's where Symbotica was birthed in, in kind of that whole world through trauma and through pain. And um, I just, you know, I was, I've been around supplements my entire life. Um, I've been around some of the key master magicians in supplementation from, you know, avocado to Ron T garden to all these people to, you know, understanding TCM and Ayurveda and also understanding the allopathic path, you know, which has some truths to it as well. And um, there's just so many like jokers in the industry and we all know the pharmaceutical industry is, um, you know, the, the act of having shareholders is a complete conflict of interest when it comes to medicine, because that means you have a fiduciary obligation to turn a profit every quarter. How does that work with healthcare? It makes absolutely no sense. And plus, pharmaceutical industry, it's it's symptomology. It's how do we get, you know, duct tape and put it over the symptom, right? Yeah. Until something else pops up. Right. And so the but the supplement industry was it was tricky as well because there were so many bad actors in there. There's so many people racing to the bottom. Right. We saw that in the CBD <laughs> world in the cannabis space. Like it's everyone you knew was getting in there to turn a profit and turn a margin. What happens when there's no intention there? You get low marginalized supplements. You get an audience that doesn't demand the best because they don't know what they're dealing with. And you get no results. So you lose trust. I wanted to, I wanted to nullify all that in one. And that was the purpose of Symbiotica. And, you know, right around the time that I started it, one of my best friends growing up, uh, his name's Shahab Elmi and his wife Dorana. They contacted me and they're like, what, whatever you're doing, you know, we just want to be a part of because w w it's incredible. Like the amount of networking that you've already done without having like a solidified, I would say, serious company in terms of like C level execs and the whole structure. He's like, there's just, you continue to do what you do, stop being the CEO. And just go into the forest, go into the alchemy, go into like, you know, looking and finding the top level compounds out there, all that kind of stuff. That was five, four and a half years ago. And we haven't looked back since. And we're the fastest growing supplement brand in the world right now um, for good reason. And again, how you do anything is how you do everything. We really wanted to separate ourselves from everyone, not because of ego, but because we're talking about things that people put in their body. You know, this is serious stuff. I take it very serious. And I, I want to raise the industry. I, I'm no, I'm, I don't want to be the only person on the block. There's billions of people here. What the hell are we talking about? That's another, that's like poverty conscious or scarcity. I'm not competing with anyone. I'm competing with myself every single day. And we blew it up. In the first two, three years, it just expanded and grew and grew. We built a campus down in San Diego and have the best team ever. Everybody's all in. And, you know, about a year and a half ago, I went deep back into becoming a student and started, you know, I would say philosophizing the alchemy and really creating some epic stuff. And I call that Symbiotica 3.0. And that's kind of where we're at right now. And so we're entering a whole nother level of, you know, ideation um, and ultimately development. And I'm just, I can't believe I'm here. It's, it's a dream come true every single day. Um, I'm grinding more than I've ever grinded in my life. I'm here for it. I don't complain about it. Sometimes I complain. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm having the best time ever. I'm connecting with beautiful souls such as yourself and your team here and everybody. And I'm, you know, I'm just a brother who's like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm all in. And uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see how far we can take it. And I think at, at this point, we've made such a dent in the world. Um, people are following suit and they're like, okay, we're going to have to change our model a little bit. We can't just stick to these old, like ancient practices of how supplementation works. Like yeah. we got to source the right things. We got to make sure they're bioactive. We got to make sure that they potentiate each other. We got to make sure the delivering me me mechanisms are proper. We got to care about people. I don't want people taking any Symbiotica products if they have no idea what it is. I don't want it because they think it's cool or it's organic or it tastes good. No, none of that. You got to 
to learn the details before you do anything. Yeah. Beautiful, man. I want to dive deeper into that, but I also am very curious and this journey of, of being a conduit for something so big to come through you and to be a leader and to be somebody that is carrying the charge of an incredible movement with what you're creating. It requires you to become a more evolved version of yourself constantly. Like the business, as you know, like relationships in general are the biggest mirrors for us. And when you have a baby that turns into this big enterprise where you have a couple hundred employees and you're, you know, growing this huge thing, uh, it requires more, it requires you to show up at deeper and deeper levels. And especially when you have situations like the, you know, the trialing time with your father and him passing, how have you been able to, and I know you live it, right? But it is a process, right? It's not just all light. It's not all dark, but having this, weaving this tapestry of the experience of you becoming you and stepping into who you want to be. How have you navigated that with the difficulties and challenges like your father passing, like just the difficulties in general of growing such a massive thing? Great question. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. It's It's been tough, man. I've had really rough nights and um, I find myself in denial, I know, and I fi I've actually reverted to escapism to a certain degree. I feel guilty about certain things that I make the wrong decision here. Um, you know, I, I think what's got me by is just knowing, truly believing, like in, in the deepest part of my heart, that his soul is within mine, and it, it's I'm his I'm his like legacy, right? And I'm the firstborn son of this Iranian lineage that was born American. Yeah. You know, my father was the last one that was Iranian born in that country. And I was the first out of thousands of generations. And he, and he made that happen. So I, I have, I'm grateful for, for that experience. And I, I can't sit in the suffering. Um, I would also say, you know, having like really beautiful feminine energy around me, you know, um, Jamie Bigelow. Um, has been in my life for four and a half, five years. We've known each other for so long. And she had, she has a lot of my dad's energy, um, you know, just so neutral, so beautiful, so understanding. And that has helped me regulate um, and found foundation in my life. And so that was very, very important. And um, I love her and honor her for that to the highest level. Like our, it's beyond just like some typical love. It's like a, it's a, it's a bond outside of the body yeah. and um, the rituals, right? And just staying clear and not getting caught up in all the other stuff because there's so much hoopla out there that can get very distracting. I've also become a hermit. That's another thing. I've I've, I've turned quasi into a hermit. You know where the circle gets tighter and that's right. The circle gets smaller. Vision gets larger. Is that the yeah. quote? And so. I'm a hermit. That's really what it is. Like I'm, I'm extrovert. I'll communicate, but my whole thing is I need to, my strategy is to respond. And I just, I like being alone. I like my time by myself. And, um, that's really been a part of my maturation because I'd been surrounded by a lot of people growing up and I was, you know, always on the go and doing things and, um, getting that, that silence has, has been very helpful. Also, you know, not to go too into detail, but being in the medicine realm, you know, I've explored some of the deepest levels of pain through the entheogenic process. And I have devout reverence for the indigenous and it's part of my blood. I think it's in my Persian mystic side and also being a biodynamic farmer. I get it. I understand the reverence it is. I mean, I, I know how to grow these things. I know what they are. I feel into those things. And that's another thing about biodynamics that taught me. So most people, when they think about biodynamic food, they think of the healthiest food on earth, uh, which is true, right? But it's not so much, Steiner didn't create it to just create a bountiful of abundant food. He created it to teach children how to connect to the earth and to the cosmos and understanding what a, you know, a closed loop system is and understanding that things can be contained energetically. And it's, it's actually pressing man to step into their stewardness, men and women, to their stewardness of the land, right? That was powerful. And, and learning that at a certain age and also always updating myself. So I'm constantly like in that awareness because we can't just move on. These are things that we have to keep cycling. It gave me um, 
an opportunity to see outside of just the material connection to my dad and, the, and, and all of the things that he filled in for me. Mm. So those things exist in other universes and other realms, uh, interdimensional for sure. Um, but it was uh, the hardest time of my life. You know, I went through, I went through hell and back. I, I got sick for the first time. I'd never been actually sick. I thought I was, you know, getting attacked by viruses and all kinds of stuff. I got bit by a rattlesnake, almost got killed d all during the same phase. This was during, uh, do you remember Symbiosis, uh, the Oregon Eclipse Festival? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was, I was forbidden to go to that, but I was speaking there. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to miss this. And I went there and I got extremely sick. And then boom, just from that point on, it was dark night of the soul for about a year. That was August 21st, 2017. Funny enough, on my mom's birthday, hmm. who's my greatest medicine, wow. my mom. So um, it's been a it's been a ride. It really has, and I'm still figuring it out. Just like in a year from now, I'll still be figuring For it out. Sure. And that's what some people have to like feel like. There's no end point here. It's yeah. what is it? Chop wood, carry water. Come yeah. enlightened. What do you do the next day? You chop wood, carry water. Yeah. This is a this is an ongoing process. There's no finish line to happiness. There's no elevator to success. Take the damn stairs. Crawl up if you have to. Just make sure you're hydrated. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, stop escaping. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And to see that your vision has been given to you for a reason. And it's for you to bring forth from the unmanifest uh -huh. to the manifest. And the more that you can crystallize and see the vision that is in your imagination, that's in the ethers, but then bring it into and alchemize it into this physical reality for others to experience. That process of being a creative being, which we all are, but to realize that, it's a continual re revelatory process. But it's such a fun journey to be on because there's no ceiling to it. It's like, how big can you dream? How much can you believe in yourself? How much impact do you really want to leave on this planet? And having, like you spoke to, having the feminine energies around you, having community and tribe and reminders of why you're on the path that you're on when those difficult moments come are so necessary for you to stay on path. They're well said. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's it. You know, um, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a full on soup. Right. There's so much beauty in there and nourishment and all the things. And to just be able to let go of your rigidity, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of in this rigidity zone of being mechanistic to a large extent. And I always say people look in the mirror for 30 hours straight. Watch what happens. You can't lie to yourself. You know, when you start realizing that, you know, you've been lying to yourself this whole time about who you truly are, what your desires are. Like, that's another thing. Like, this whole culture is like, what's where's all this shame coming from? Why are we shaming people? Someone wants to, to date multiple women, let him date multiple women. As long as he's honest about it, who cares? It's like we have all these different like rules and regulations of what we think is right and what we think is wrong. What the heck is going on? Just <laughs> be in your be in your truth uh -huh. and embody your truth. Yeah. It's a funny thing to be afraid of yourself. Yeah. I, it's a trick. That that could be it right there. It's like, you know, we're just, you know, you've pulled, you're, we're pulling the the blindfold on people. Yeah. And they just can't see themselves. All, all the ancient mystics, it's really at the core of it is what we're talking about. You know, whether it's Taoism or Buddhism or Hinduism, or even, you know, ancient Zoroastrian, which is what, my bloodline. It's really like, where are you being, where's your governing coming from? And then now you hear it in the 21st century model is like, no, that's not your opinion. That's the, the news's opinion, right? And that's part of the whole, that's like a David Icke thing, right? Problem, reaction, solution. They can't put an agent in front of everyone's door and tell them, this is what you have to believe. They have to create a psychological operation where your parents are now the agent. And your brother is the agent. Everyone around you is enforcing those codes. It's a trip. It really is. It's actually a cosmic joke. Yeah, it is. It is. Because that's really where I'm at, too. This yeah. is like, this is the best ever. Right. I actually think this is the best ever. Right. You like Camp trailing, all this stuff, geoengineering, all this water. This is the best news of all time because what a time to stand up. This is the greatest mission of all time. I'm here for it. Yeah. We went, we came and incarnated on this time on earth to face a huge boss, you know? And it's That's like right. when you see the game that this reality is, then you can play the part and you cannot, 
be under the illusion that that's who you are, but you can play the game and the mission that you're here to bring forth and to uh, liberate the world to the best of your ability. And it's, uh, I think right now we just, and I'm sure you could have said this in many generations in the past, but I really do feel like we're at such this pivotal point where we have access to the whole planet. We're so connected yet disconnected, but we are so connected digitally with the whole planet and we can spread messages of consciousness and raise awareness through conversations and through podcasts and through media and through film and by first and foremost being the change that we want to see in the world and how that impacts, impacts and expresses through whatever our medium or art form is. But it gets so exciting when you realize that it is a game and that you have the power to actually affect change in your reality, but it comes from your your sense of being and who you are and how much you actually embody it and not how much like you spoke to for a circle, full circle, like we spoke to in the beginning of this, of trying to enforce change and to make others change. And that's just a futile approach. Again, very well said. Yeah. What, what I get from that flexibility, yeah. being able to bob and weave, right? What Bruce Lee, like be like water, right? That's the whole thing. Like if you can't bend, you're going to break. That's really important. That's like a human faculty. That's our consciousness. That's our physical body. We got to be able to take it, move with it, adjust with it, see it for what it is, and then move forward. It's just, and it's, the thing is always moving forward. That's like motion, just like water. Water needs to move. It's not w moving. It stagnates. If it stagnates, it gets filled with all kinds of toxins, right? It becomes polluted. Same thing with our energetic field. We got to be moving. And that doesn't mean stop not being present, you know, all that. No, no. It just means that energy has to move through us. That's very important. It's yeah. a good meditation. Yeah, for yep. sure. It's, it's beautiful. And it's, there's such a, like a low level of anxiety so many people carry within their bodies because they haven't moved, right? After a large amount, like a big physical hike or something that you do, and that if you go sit down, there's like that level of stillness that becomes available to you. Totally. Right? Yeah. That's the body like regulating back. Because right? you're under stress and then poof, all of a sudden you just hit that parasympathetic wave. Yeah. That's everything, man. That's that's like, you know, I, I, I used to surf big waves. I used to do some crazy stuff. And I was always like, what am I doing? I, it wasn't about that. It was the moment after. It was that zone that you get, that rush. You know, it's just like, woof. And um, I think there's healthy ways of finding that in your life. And people have got to get up and love what they do. Right, because if you're living in a false identity, then you're there's no chance. You know, you're gonna you're gonna be escaping your entire life and then incarnating it and trying to do the same mistakes again and again and again. We got to get out of the false identity. And I always say that a big portion of the population possibly is a caricature of how they perceive others perceiving them. Right. So it's like all of a sudden your whole behavior pattern is based on what you think someone thinks you are. Once you get caught up in that for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, that's ingrained into your bones. And that's straight up patterns. It's full on. And that's like entities attached and all kinds of stuff. And that's why people, you know, that's why they get blitzed on alcohol, right? Because alcohol, just think about what alcohol is. The spirit. cosmic alchemy. Well, it's Al Ghul, right? Evil spirit. But what is alcohol? I've been using alcohol in ceremony for a long time. What do I do it for? I use it to extract the essence out of, you know, herbs and flowers. So the same thing happens when you're drinking alcohol. It's extracting your essence. That's why you pee out. It's a diuretic. It's peeing out your soul, which throws in ma magnesium and a few other things that are really important. And that's why people black out and entities attached. And that, you've seen people that black out when they're drinking. They're a completely different person, right? And we're, th these are, I'm using this as an example, right? This is an example of just not being in your body is always going to put you in a position of vulnerability and, da and danger zone. And we're, we're dealing with that as a society. Just go walk around Venice, go walk around, you know, this is crazy what we're, what we're seeing out there. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just so widespread, you know, and it's, not to demonize behavior, make make a moral judgment on what's right and what's wrong, just to look at cause and effect. Like, what do you want in your reality and what conditions are necessary for your desired aim to arrive? Right. And yeah. how'd you get there in the first place? Yeah. Right. Wouldn't you think that's a, that's mm -hmm. an important, like, for okay, sure. how did I get here? Yeah. You know, yeah. just look at that. You have your storyboard. Everyone has their own storyboard. I'm telling you, like, once we start equipping ourselves with discipline, 
Maybe that's really what it is at the root. Some people don't like that word discipline. <laughs> I love the word discipline. It's disciple, disciple yeah. right? And like having discipline in your life to have to take the effort to an, analyze and do an audit on how you got here, how you got in this political position, how you got in this like your life position and relationships, all that stuff. That's your that's your you know blueprint. Take a look at your blueprint if you're not happy. If you're happy, just keep going. Go, yeah. go berserk. Yeah, we, I mean, you spoke to it earlier, right? If we live in a society where we can order everything with one click of the button on this <laughs> on our phones yeah. and it comes to us, we live in such a instant gratification and convenient society. That's great for a lot of the things that become available to us. But if we then don't choose our discomfort, if we don't choose the hard, the hard physical things that we have to go through, then hard will keep choosing us in discomfort, you know, uncomfortable ways that we don't want to experience. And so that's how important the physical exertion and exercise and movement comes in and the cold plunges and the chosen hormesis, right? That's and right. So important. It creates it, it creates flexibility there, right? Yeah. So you can regulate stress, right? If you're not practicing going into stress consistently you know, you're going to want to fight someone who cuts you off. You know, your phone call with your partner is going to set you over the edge. You know, a piece of bad news that comes your way, you're not going to be able to handle it, right? So it's just like constantly being able to be adaptable, right? That's the whole thing with like medicinal mushrooms and herbs and all that stuff. They help you respond to stress, right? Like cordyceps and chaga and reishi and shizandra and tulsi, holy basil, all these things. They're adaptogenic. They create a microtoxic effect in the body, which causes the body to have to react to it. That's what makes them valuable and then gives us like that little bit of energy. Uh, everything is there for us as medicine, all, all the things. It just depends on how you look at it. Yeah. Like we were speaking to outside, we so often overlook just sun and water, right? Like the source <laughs> of life. <laughs> the fundamentals. Yeah. Like where we come from, Yeah, you know? Everything that you eat is basically sequestered sunlight. Just think about that. I don't care if it's a ribeye steak or, you know, a soursop or durian growing on the Hawaiian islands. It's all a product of sun, right? And so just like, oh, what, are you, what the hell is this guy talking about? Sun. Start looking into that. You know, it's like maybe there's a rabbit hole there. Maybe there's a scientist <laughs> in there that you never knew existed. I mean, this is what sets my soul on fire. I love yeah. getting into that kind of stuff and talking about just like, whoa, yeah. the, we're dynamic beings, you know, like, you know, vitamin D, what is vitamin D? Well, it's a hormone. It's not really a vitamin and it's activated from UVA, UVB light that hits the cholesterol on our skin and turns on 3000 genes associated with our immunological defense system. It's that's crazy. Sunlight hits our retina. Like what's happening right now? How are you and I, how are we all seeing each other right now? That's a trip for me, right? Just on a quantum level. Right, like if there was no light in here, it'd be pitch dark. We wouldn't be able to see each other. We'll be maybe be able to hear each other, maybe be able to smell each other, but we can't see each other. But because that light is on, that artificial light is hitting the crystals on my skin, the collagen and protein. That's creating a refraction and hitting your retina, which is then going down cones in your eye, eyes made of DHA, docosahexaenoic acid. It's hitting your optic nerve, hitting your back part of your brain, and creating biomimicry chemicals that creates a Projection. And now all of a sudden, I'm inside of you. <laughs> Just think how trippy that is. That's happening in real time, 0. 0.0026 seconds. Just the visual is so astoundingly insane that we, we take that for granted, let alone smell and sound and the, you know, the audiophile and saccules in our brain and olfactory settings of smell. It's like we are so dynamic. That's why, again, not to get off to a tangent, Everything around us is medicine and food and poison. Got to have that in your clarity. Mm. We're very, very dynamic beings. We absorb everything. Mm -hmm. I was looking at a um, sailboat from my house and I was like, is a sailboat out there or is it in here? <laughs> <laughs> the right answer is it's actually in here. Right. Yeah. And I think it's one of the most liberating understandings that human experience is essentially 100% generated from within. And I got a big dose of this experience when I went and did my darkness retreat because all of a sudden your all external stimuli is just shut off, right? And the display of your reality completely goes blank. And that's liberating because then when it turns back on, you're like, oh, wow. It's it could, the display of your reality can just turn on and turn off. And 
you gave this beautiful understanding of like the the way in which the process actually happens in which light reflects and is flipped within the cones in our eyes and we see the we see each other but it's happening within us and when you have that understanding and perspective that life is generated from within then it creates space between the stimulus and the response. You become less of a compulsive reactive being to everything happening within your reality and you have the power of choice. That's what realizing your conscious being allows for. You can actually choose certain things because you're responding to reality, not reacting to it. And that becomes, when that happens, so much becomes available to you because you're choosing the direction that you want to go in life instead of compulsively moving in the direction that you're programmed to. 100 million percent. Again, well said. You yeah. become the the master gatekeeper versus, you know, everything's happening to me. I'm victim, you know, all that kind of stuff. Hypochondriac energy, all that kind of stuff. This is allowing you to take ownership of your life and be able to really be the line of discernment. Yeah. Right. That's epic. That's so, so important. Yeah. You know, people are are, are not armed with that today. That's why, you know, that's why people get break down and have violent communication. I mean, this is at the cornerstone of like nonviolent communication mm -hmm. or what's the other one like tapping, like mm -hmm. what's tapping doing? Well, it's energetically connecting you with how you're going to react to things and stuff like that. We're dynamic in that sense. These are all disciplinary actions that people can start working on on a daily basis. They can say, you know, I'm going to rise today and from, you know, 5.30 a.m. to, you know, 6.15 a.m., I'm going to work on thinking about things that trigger me. I'm going to write them down. I'm going to think about things that I, I'm easily offended by. What is it about people that I always find irritating? These are all things that I do myself. I'll continue to do them forever until I'm out of this body. It's really, really important because you're just arming yourself with ways to deal with shit as opposed to like having to have such a, a, a crash you know, when you get so angry and you get so frustrated and it's the end of the world, all that stuff, not only is that just the worst ever, but you're taking a massive hit to your health, to your health span. I want to be clear on that. Anyone listening to this, if you're constantly like in a state of fight, flight, hide or whatever the hell it is that you're doing, you're running from that proverbial lion 24-7 and you're not a zebra in the Serengeti, you're having problems, you're going into the disease span sooner because your body is constantly fighting with itself and it's in nowhere able to find homeostasis and balance. We are frequency beings. We have to, this isn't woo-woo, airy-fairy, hippie stuff. This is real. We're ba our homeostatic is based on a level frequency. Our, the hertz levels in our brains from all the different waves, everything has to be in a pretty unique balance. Of course, there's moments where things have to be throttled, right? But that's how that's hormesis. And then we go back to a normal state. If we're constantly in a dysregulated cortisol state, we're going to be breaking down and disease will be coming in. There's a book, Why, Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. I highly recommend that for people to read. It's a great reflection for people to understand how the body works because it's the same thing. They basically monitored, monitored zebras. And as soon as the lion starts chasing, that zebra goes from parasympathetic to sympathetic, immediately adrenaline kicks in, survival kicks in, heartbeat kicks in, sweat. I mean, every single physiological response that keeps the, the, the zebra safe from trotting at 45, 50 miles an hour kicks in. And as soon as that lion gives up, which is usually like 95% of the time, that zebra within five minutes is back to homeostasis on everything, right? Yet, we're, there's no lion chasing us, but we're living in that throttled state, sitting in our car, sitting in our, you know, stuck to our phones, stuck to that aramonic way of thinking, that me mechanistic material world, all, you know, all the pain, all the frustration, all the anger that's keeping us in that. Body's falling apart, body's getting acidic. And at that point, it's give me drugs give me sex, give me alcohol, give me shitty food, let me be a shitty person. That's the only way that they're feeling better. That's just, that's the coping mechanism. It's real. That's mm. real. And that, look, that that's just a perspective, but based on my observation and direct observation and also the things that I've gone through myself, I'm, I'm able to figure out that makes a lot of sense of where we're at today. Mm. Beautiful, bro. I'm, <laughs> everything we're talking to here today is super interconnected. I, I, I want to bring up being somebody who's like a biodynamic farmer. What have you learned about our relationship with nature, with soil, and the true nature of self, and how it intercorrelates? I know we touched on some things, but uh, it's it's very unique the plethora of different ways in which you. Uh, 
create this massive business and you have a farm and you're like super into your own spiritual practice and do ceremonies and like there's a lot of different things that you do not fit the the uh, mainstream narrative or picture of of any type of person. You are you. You're like one of one, right? And so I'd love uh, for you to dive into a little bit about how it's, yeah, what you've learned in the biodynamic farming process about the nature of self and how we're connected with with nature on that deep fundamental level. Uh, I think it's the the most, you know, poignant part of my life is really getting that, the, the biodynamic perspective. At, at the end of the day, and I think mothers know it best, um, it's about stewarding. It's about taking care of something and knowing you're the steward of it. You don't own it but you're the steward, there's a level of honor and reverence that comes from, you know, tending a garden and really understanding or understanding all the components that make things thrive and create stability and balance and ultimately reaps the highest rewarding food, which is ultimately going to feed us and it's going to go back into the land. That energy is the cornerstone of biodynamics. It's understanding where we are in the world, understanding our cosmology, understanding the seasons, understanding the waxing and waning of the moon, understanding that the cosmic cow is the sacred cow, is the sacred you know, fuel for the land you know, preparing for the the winter, pr- taking the manure, burying it in bullhorns under the ground, r- digging them up in springtime. And there you have the fulvic and humic. It basically turns into black gold, L- learning how to spread that over the entire garden, working with crystals and herbs and, you know, all those different preparations. That is really at the, at the cornerstone. It's a spiritual process. It's, it's not, it's not how I can I get the best yield. It's how can I create something based on the cosmic law and the cosmic forces. And so there's so many people that are into, you know, their astrology and their gene keys and human design and all these things. All of those are very similar coded systems within biodynamic farming. And Steiner's um, way of cultivating the child was through the practice of learning how to tend the garden and how to understand what was happening above us in the sky clock. And so it's it's really, um, I would say, it's the cosmic genesis, the cosmogenesis of earth and sky with the human right in the middle who's stewarding the plant intelligence and the animal intelligence of all the sentient beings. It's freaking phenomenal stuff. Mm-hmm. I highly recommend someone taking a biodynamics course. Um, there's Demeter courses throughout the world. I put a lot of um, information out there on biodynamics. There's a lot of books on biodynamics. I would definitely start with someone writing about biodynamics as opposed to Steiner's perspective. Um, it's, it's, um, I would say it's a little bit difficult for people to get at first. Um, but for me, that was the main cultivar within my ethos of really you know, embodying that truly mm-hmm. and bringing it to my everyday life. Yeah, and to see the laws of nature that you're working with and to be like a steward and see how much of a steward that you can be and how uh, you're working with the laws of within the laws of nature and with the laws of nature. And like, I'm sure that's just impacted your understanding of everything else that you're doing in life from the fundamental, like understanding roots and soil and like how that metaphorically translates to everything else you want to create in your life. Totally. And not going against it. Right. That's the whole thing. Everything today is linear. It's left angles, right angles. It's all these different edges. That's not our, that's not our cosmic law. We have to flow with nature. Um, you know, getting into Steiner's work led me to Victor Schauberger's work. Do you know Victor Schauberger? He was an Austrian wizard, um, Austrian just like Steiner, and uh, he was a, a water wizard. He's the guy that figured out implosionary energy, vortex energy. Are you familiar with implosionary energy versus explosion? This is how springs work. This is how the blood in our body works. This is how um, trees get water to the leaves. It's through implosionary energy. Forces like burning gasoline or coal, those are explosionary energies, right? You're creating an explosion. You control that explosion and it pushes a piston or something like yeah, that. Combustion. Combustion, yeah. right? That's that's a one-time energy and, and you reap the benefit of that. You reap the benefit of that explosion. You capture it. Implosion is nature's reaction to explosion and very fascinating. And that was another telltale sign for me of understanding nature. For example, when you go to like certain places in the world and there's waterfalls, have you ever seen like the salmon or trout jump up the streams? Have you seen that before? Mm -hmm. That's a phenomenon, right? 
we don't talk much about it, but what, how is that happening? How is that, how is that salmon getting up Creek? How's that trout going up that waterfall, that 12 foot waterfall, 14 foot wall? Well, what it does, it goes into a hypnotic state and it taps into the force of the water coming down. Nature's responding to that. That's called implosion. And they, they shoot up. It's like a channel. They just go right up into that. And so like understanding that there are forces in this realm outside of what we learned in, you know, chemistry class or science class or whatever that is, whatever all that stuff is, it, it has really opened me up and opened up my heart to like understanding that there, we're surrounded by magic 24 mm. seven. It's just like, and it's not just being woo woo with crystals or anything like that. Like it's really like understanding the, the, the unique subtle forces of our world. And that's, that's like where you practice alchemy and you talk to any like master magician or master alchemist, they're, they're working with subtle forces. They're not, you know, it's like scalar technology, understanding moon technology, understanding Ormus technology, which is, which is another thing that I'm very much into in terms of gardens and stuff like that. These are, these are hidden subtle energies that are so beautiful once you start unlocking into your own realm, because the true philosopher's stone is not a bunch of maniac scientists trying to use mercury to turn lead into gold, right? And killing themselves and poisoning themselves. A true philosopher's stone is the cosmic alchemy turning lead within you into gold. And that's the whole biodynamic way of thinking. It's how do we turn, how do we evolutionize ourselves to get out of the material mechanistic thinking mm -hmm. and free ourselves to unlock ourselves? It's phenomenal stuff. <laughs> hey, you asked for it, man. I know, I did. Sorry. <laughs> That, that's my core passion, right? Yeah. Where, where, this topic right here is another core passion of mine. I, yeah. I just, I can go on forever. And I just love it. Yeah. It's, I, I, that's takes me to being a child. Mm. And I think, again, another thing is inner child, yeah. right? I see that with you. Like when I'm, when I'm looking at you and I'm feeling into it, we're like children here, just having the best time ever talking about things that are so freaking awesome. <laughs> and I think we need to go back to being a child. Yeah. That's what medicine did for me. Mm. You know, smoking that 5-MeO, smoking that toad, that took me to being a child again. I, I went from straight businessman to back to being 12 years young, being mentored by my cousin. And all of a sudden I had the whole world in front of me with imagination and love and thoughts and all that stuff. It's being in that child state. That's really what it is. And Steiner actually said that too. He's like, the moment we start becoming rigid and old in our thinking is the moment we start to decay. That's so true. Think about all the people that you know that are like in their 70s and 80s. They're either you know, hardened, stiffened, calcified, fibrotic, because they have a material way of thinking. Where I know 70, 80, 90 year olds that look better than most 50 year olds that are like children. Yeah. Because they're living in that childhood life force. That's fluidity, that's hydration, that's movement, malleability, all of those things, characteristics that are so fundamental. I'll, I'll, one, one more is Steiner would say, disease begins in the mind. Just think how powerful that is on an epigenetic level. Like Dr. Bruce Lipton's work, Biology of Belief. I've read that book a thousand times. Mm -hmm. He's a friend of ours. I just, that whole thing's real. The epigenetic code is real. Epi being above genetics. Your, the way that you portray yourself, your reflection on self, the way you're operating every day is going to dictate whether this gene turns on or whether this gene turns off or whether you become an asshole or whether you become, you know, the best person ever. It's all, it's all dictated on that. Yeah. Looking at that epigenetic level, it's obviously what we do that turns on and off those genes, but also who we are while we do it. You gave a really beautiful distinction of, you know, there's individuals that are 80, 90, 100 years old that are so calcified in their way of being or so, some that are so connected to their inner child. And having that distinction of being an elder versus being elderly, you know, and that, that you can have that connection to play, be so alive throughout your life. Who you are while, while you do what you do is ultimately what actually makes a difference in reality and how you impact change around you. And so, you know, it's it's difficult, damn near impossible for a long period of time to be in the energy of play when we're not doing something that really lights us up, that we want to be doing. Like that level of willingness, that's the difference between heaven and hell. Like I could want to go into the pits of hell because I want to go on a mission and it's because I decided to do it. I'm willing to do it. It can, I can be, it can feel like heaven. Hell can feel like heaven. When you're forced into jail, that's hell. Your willingness was, t was taken away from it, you know? But when you find the path of alignment, what you really love to be doing, it really lights you up. That path of 
truthfully following your calling and not just the unconscious drives that are working beneath the scene, then you bring play into what you're doing. And it becomes so fun. And you do your best work when you're joyful. A yeah. hundred billion percent. Yeah. yeah. We're our inner child is always screaming at us. You know, we were supposed to be playing. Yeah. You know, we're supposed to be enjoying ourselves. It's it's gotten too gnarly. And like, look, here's the reality. We are in an interesting time. Right. Very. Like, for example, you need abundance to drink clean water today. I think that's the most clear way of like understanding the truth of our reality. Like, what? Just to drink clean water, you need money. That is an indicator of the times we're in. So we're talking about being a child and, and having the best time ever, but we also have to realize we're in interesting times right now. And so I think it's finding like that balance where you know you're building stability, you're building roots, you're protecting yourself, and you're doing the things to you know put you in a, a position to succeed. We can't be in denial all the time because th that can get too far out of hand too. Yeah, right. Where we just lost all our responsibilities and we just lost all that. And there's a lot of people that are have incarnated here that have no idea what all this mechanistic stuff is. Like they can't listen to the news, they can't balance a checkbook, they want no part of it. I know a lot of people like that, yeah. and those are the people that have drifted into hyper spirituality. And they're in that 5D consciousness or 60, whatever, whatever goes up to. I don't know what it goes up to anymore. <laughs> and and I see that as fleeting energy too. And but I also I understand I understand it. I get it because they're just they can't operate in this like in this debt slave capitalistic society where you gotta like pay taxes and show up for work. And you know, you gotta like go to the DMV and you got to have all these licenses and insurances and all this shit. You know what I mean? It's just, it's, a, it's a dichotomy we're in, you know? And, and it's, I think we just have to figure it out. We got to find balance and, and really ask ourselves, what are we prepared to do? You know, how far are we willing to go? Beautiful, man. <laughs> it's outside of being a biodynamic farmer where you're planting seeds in the earth, probably also even more valuable is the, the the seeds you're sowing within the minds and the hearts of people and the message that you carry forth in this life. And so thank you for being a beautiful articulator of these concepts and for walking the path and for trying your best to live in integrity and, and share that with the world, man. It's super inspiring and I can totally feel like the, the brotherhood that's been created here. And I'm excited to continue to get to know you and deepen this, uh, this connection and how we can weave and, and share more with the world. Andre, I receive that fully 100%. And it's an honor to be here to meet you and your team. And um, I'm full support. And it was uh, it was brought on by um, Mr. Roa. Yes, it shout out Adam Roa. The shout homie. out to Adam. He's become a dear brother of mine. You know, he's, he's spending time in my hood for the last like 12 months. And we just really connected on so many levels. He's such a lovely human being. Mm. And um you know, to be able to connect to you through through him, it's just that's like attracting like. And I really appreciate the reflection, and I'm here for it. You know, I'm I'm here to go as far as anyone wants to go. I'm I'm all the fuck in. Um, this is the greatest journey of all time. I'm here for it, and I, I I'm doing it with the most humble eyes and deepest level of reverence for everybody and what everyone's going through. You know, you're not alone. We're to, this is not just like lip service, soul family, soul tribe. Really, you're not alone. You know, there, there's, there's your, your brothers and sisters are here. Mm. I, I feel that fully. And whoever is listening to this and tuning to, into this, maybe on YouTube, I hope that you can feel that and, and truly mean that these conversations aren't just to have these conversations. They're really to plant the seeds and to let you know that there is this family out here. We're here. We're, we're standing in it. And thank you for ringing out the last episode of this podcast ever in the studio. <laughs> we're going to be transitioning to Topanga soon and build out the studio there, more nature, all the things that we're talking about. I'm really excited to be in that frequency. Um, but uh, but yeah, bro, we're closing out. Uh, closing out the, yeah. the Venice pad. Yeah. I love this place. This is an epic vibe. You guys did a great job. I'm sure it's just going to keep getting better and better. Yeah. I can't wait to have you down in my studio for Wake the Fake Up in Laguna. Yeah. We're going to probably do the same thing. We just move on, yeah. right? Because that's really what this is. This is not some interview or something like that. It's just two people that have some values that might be similar that are creating alchemy together through like, you know, the, the spoken word. This is poetry on that self. Mm -hmm. What's the what's the whole thing? So your true self is immaterial. Your conscious is ethereal. It pre-exists your body and transcends the material. Mm. Let that settle into your bones. 
I say wow. that every rise. That's beautiful. <laughs> I might have to play that back. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate it, man. This yeah. is uh, inwards, onwards, upwards, and uh, let's just keep it going and and have the best time ever in the yeah. process. I'm here for it, man. Is there anything else that you want to share that's on your heart? And then also where people can find you, what you got going on, just anything else that you want to share? You know, I, I would just say like, don't get caught up in the fear of porn out there, but also be aware of what's going on, yeah. right? There's a, there's a happy balance of not putting your head into the sand and, you know, thinking namaste is going to get you through it. But there's also a, a presence of not being infiltrated by all the poison and all the rhetoric. Um, you know, there's many different areas to receive information, not through the mainstream media. I highly recommend that. And again, with anything that I, I talked about today, um, just take it at face value. And if it's something that resonates with you, investigate further. It's not really, it's not for me. It's just for you. Mm, it's beautiful. That balance is so needed and a really beautiful uh, thing to hold within, to not be totally ignorant to what's happening, but to not let the fear control you. So thank totally. you for a beautiful yep. invitation. For everybody that's been tuning into this episode of the No Life Self Podcast, I love it, man. Thank you, Sherry, so much for coming on and sharing, brother. I'm excited. We'll run it back at some point. If you had an upload, a download, everybody who's listening to this podcast, you come here to know yourself deeper and to become the most authentically and liberated version of yourself. So thank you for walking that path first and foremost. If there was an insight that did come through, let us know in the comment section below what resonated with you, what was impactful. And um, everywhere you can find Sherveen and Symbiotica, everything they're doing will be linked down in the description. Until next time, be well. Thank you.